In this video, I'm going to show you an amazing tool that allows you to test, experiment, and deploy machine learning models in the matter of minutes. That's right, within a few minutes and a few terminal commands, you can have this up and running on your machine and server and allow people in your organization, your team, your friends, whoever it may be, to mess around with your machine learning models. This is also quite useful if you want to deploy already trained models and just see how they work on your own local hardware. So with that said, let me give you a quick demo of how all of this works. Then I'm going to explain to you more about the tool, kind of what it is, how it works, and we'll go from there. All right. So in front of me, I have two WSL terminals open on my Windows machine that are running Ubuntu 20.0.4. Now, the one on the left is running the server and the one on the right is going to be running the client. Now, the point of this demonstration is to illustrate how simple it can be to interact with your deployed machine learning models. After I give you this demo, then I'm going to walk a little bit through the code. And of course, I'm going to elaborate on the tool. Now, the tool that we're using, framework library, whatever you want to call it, is called PyTriton. Now, this comes from NVIDIA. This is a wrapper around their Triton inference server, which is pretty much the state of the art when it comes to deploying, testing, and working with machine learning models. This is used by all kinds of different companies. PyTriton is relatively new. NVIDIA has kind of given me a brief, and I'm teaming up with them for this video because I wanted to make you guys aware of this. Obviously, it's completely free. All of the information you need will be available in the description, but let's have a quick look at this demo. So on the left, I've got the Triton inference server running, and this is actually going to kind of wrap or allow me to use what's known as a stable diffusion model. This model essentially takes text input prompts and then generates some kind of image. Now on the right side of my screen, it's a bit small, but you can see down here it says, what image would you like to be created? This is my client script that's going to interact with this server. So on this terminal, I'm just going to type a dog in a park, okay? and hit enter. It's going to ask me what file name I would like to save this image as. I'm just going to go with test.png. And then it's going to take a second here. You're going to see that the request will be sent over here to my server where it's going to be executed on my GPU. And in a few seconds, this will be finished. It will save the image and I'll show you what the image looks like. All right, so the image has now been saved. I'm just going to open it up so you guys can see what I get here. So this is the image that was generated, a dog in the park. Again, this is using a stable diffusion machine learning model, which is really a pipeline of multiple models that create this image. Now, just to demonstrate the capabilities of a model like this, I'll do a more complicated prompt. So something like an alien riding a horse in a desert. OK, so let's save this as alien.png. Let's give that a second and then have a look at the result. All right, so here we are. This is the resulting image. I don't know if this is quite an alien, but it is riding a horse in the desert. So pretty good. And obviously you could mess with this and ask it to create all kinds of different images. The point here was just to demonstrate how simple it was for me to actually run this program. So now that I've given you this quick demo, I want to briefly discuss what's typically involved in deploying a machine learning model so you can actually see the benefit of using a tool like PyTriton. All right, so I've just opened up the PyTriton GitHub page to go through some of the issues you might encounter if you're trying to deploy a machine learning model on your own. Now, first of all, you might use something like Flask, right? This is a pretty popular web framework. It's lightweight. It's easy to use, easy to learn. The issue with using something like that for a machine learning deployment is that you're not going to have a lot of the features that you want pre-built into the Flask application. You're going to have to write a lot of custom code. If you want this to be scalable, you're going to have to implement features like dynamic batching. You're going to run into a whole host of issues. It's going to take you a significant amount of time to actually get a scalable deployment. Just looking at this diagram here, you can see that some of the features you might want in your Flask application is dynamic batching, managing models, supporting different hardware environments, managing multiple frameworks like PyTorch, TensorFlow, et cetera, having multiple GPUs running, model versioning, runtime optimization. There's a million things that you would have to write on your own, and it's just really not time effective to do that. So you can continue to read through here, and I'm sure if any of you have attempted to deploy a machine learning model, you can relate to some of these struggles. But this is why you would use something like the PyTriton inference server. So now it's time to discuss what PyTriton is. Well, PyTriton is really the Python wrapper around NVIDIA's Triton inference server. It provides a Flask slash fast API like interface that makes it very easy for you to essentially bind a function to an API endpoint that can then serve machine learning results in a machine learning model. I'm going to show you a code example in a minute, but essentially PyTriton implements all of those features that you would want in your own Flask server for you. So that means you can spend as little time as possible deploying your machine learning model and just use all of these built in features and functionality. 
This is regularly optimized. It works on pretty much any hardware platform. It supports all of your major machine learning models and platforms or development kits like PyTorch, TensorFlow, OpenVINO, uh, SKLearn, name one. It probably supports that. Obviously, it's very optimized. It allows for parallelism between your CPU, GPU, and just tons of features that honestly, I'm not even qualified to talk about. And for anyone that does work with machine learning models, I'd highly recommend checking it out. Even for myself, who's not a machine learning engineer or a machine learning expert, I found it relatively simple once I got the setup done to actually be able to deploy different machine learning models. And for me, it was cool because I could actually test out all of these interesting models on my own hardware and my own machine with relative ease. So lastly, I'll just mention here that in addition to all of the features provided by PyTriton, this really is just easy to use. It's going to be cost effective and scalable. It's supported by NVIDIA, and this is something that works with Docker, Kubernetes, etc. So it really is truly scalable. It's going to make your life a lot easier compared to trying to work in Flask. Now, I know I kind of sound like a salesman here, but the reality is all of this is free. You don't need to pay for this. I don't even know how you would pay for something like this. So that's kind of why I'm hyping it up because I know this is going to help a lot of you guys. So I want to encourage you to check it out if you are in the machine learning AI space. Anyways, let's do a quick code demo here so you guys can see how easy it actually is. Uh, I don't want to just keep talking about it. I want to want to show you myself. So again, remember on the left side, I have the server on the right side. I have my client uh, rather than showing you the code here in my terminal. I'll just show it to you in Visual Studio Code. Uh, it's a little bit of a better interface. So let's start with the server, which is the thing that's probably most important to you guys. So keep in mind, all of this code here is what allowed me to deploy the stable diffusion pipeline, which I used to generate those images at the beginning of the video. So I import my libraries or my modules. Uh, torch diffusers. This is what gives me access to the stable diffusion pipeline. I need some things from PyTriton, like my model configuration, tensor, Triton, batch, etc. And then I import NumPy as NP. Now up here, I just define the model that I want to use. Now there's all kinds of different models you can use here. You can use hugging face models. You can use your own custom PyTorch models. You can use TensorFlow models. There's all kinds of documentation on how to do this. I'm not going to get into that in this video. And then I define the type the revision, and then I'm just specifying that I want to utilize my GPU. So I'm going to CUDA. Then I have a little helper function here, converting something to a NumPy array for me. And then I have the function that I'm actually essentially serving using PyTriton. So this is all I need to actually use the stable diffusion pipeline. I have my prompt, so I'm just grabbing uh, the kind of prompt field from my input. I am then going to do a little bit of kind of NumPy conversion here. I'm not going to talk about exactly what I'm doing here. And then I essentially pass that to my stable diffusion pipeline. I specify the height and the width of the image that I want. I grab all of my images and then I essentially return those images in an array. So this function is what I'm going to bind down here to the API endpoint that I'm calling text to image. So what that means is that I've essentially said, OK, I want to have an endpoint called text to image. I want the inference function to be generate image. I want my input structure to look like this my output structure to look like this. And then this is the basic configuration for my model where I'm having the maximum, uh, maximum, sorry, batch input size of eight. That means that we can batch up to eight inputs together, pass them to the model. So that way we can have the best scalability and performance. Obviously, we could batch more, less, et cetera. But the point of this is that this is literally all I need to deploy this model. I didn't need to set up my own Flask server. I initialized Triton. I used this bind method here. I pass the name of the endpoint. I pass the function that I want. I give some basic information like the input and the shape of the input and then the output and the shape of the output, the configuration. And then I run the inference server. And all of a sudden, I now have a live endpoint that I can call. And as long as I pass the correct input, I get my machine learning output, which in this case is going to be an array that represents an image. That's it. So there you go. Now, if I go to client.py, I just wrote a kind of a nice client here so that I can interact with it. This could be five lines of code if I wanted it to be. The idea is I'm importing uh, pill, I'm importing numpy, I'm importing the PyTriton client. I then have my generate image function here. I create a prompt array. The reason I'm doing this is that you can pass multiple prompts to this model. So you can have it generate like 10 images at once. You don't always have to do one. Hence why I'm kind of putting this in an array. Then I'm saying with model, I'm doing this on localhost. The name of the endpoint is text image. I could have multiple endpoints that I deployed if I wanted to. And I'm saying that my result dictionary is equal to client dot in first sample. And then the sample that I'm using here is my prompts. So that's essentially the input I'm passing to it. I then create a pill image from the NumPy array that is returned to me from this function. 
I save that image and then I'm able to view it. The rest of this code here is just kind of giving me a nice interface so I can type in and give the file name and all of that. But that's it. Like that's all you need to do to deploy a model. And if you wanted to use a different model, then you would just change the pipeline up here. You'd probably have to do a little bit of pre-processing for your inputs, depending on what the structure and shape should be. And then you're off to the races. That's all you need to do to get them going. So just to give you another example or just to show you, I guess, how this works one last time, let me spin up the server one more time for you. So I've just shut it down here and we can uh, spin it back up again. So I'm going to type Python three server.py. This contains the same code you just saw in VS code. Let's clear this one and then start up our client and we'll just give this a second to boot up and then we can use the client and generate the images again. All of the code you just saw is what's running on the left and the right hand side of my screen. All right. So the service is now started. I'm just going to ask this to generate an image. So let's say that we want a snail attacking a pig that is riding a cat. All right, let's see if it can actually give us that. I'll just name this pig dot PNG. I don't know how good the stable diffusion model is, but so far it's been pretty good to me. Let's wait for this to finish. I'm going to open up the image and then I'll show you what we get. All right. So there we go. That's kind of a weird image that was generated here. It's kind of like a mixture of a snail and a pig together. I don't see a cat anywhere. I think I put cat here, right? Yeah. Riding a cat. But either way, we <laughs> we got something that was kind of relevant uh, to what it is that we input it. So there you go. That is mostly what I wanted to show you in this video. Now, I'll just give you a quick notes related to kind of getting this running on your own machine. Uh, the installation and setup is pretty straightforward. You do need to be running some kind of Linux distribution. That's why I'm in WSL here on Windows. The WSL version that worked best for me is uh, Ubuntu 20.0.4. Once you're inside of that, there's a few basic things you need to install and set up. But what you can do is just run an NVIDIA Docker container. All of this documentation is available from the links that I'm going to leave in the description, and it pretty much installs everything that you need for you automatically. Once you're inside of the Docker container, you just need to install the pip library for the uh, NVIDIA, uh, what do you call it, PyTriton service or, or server, whatever you want to call it. So you would just do something like pip install and then Py and then NVIDIA, if we could type this correctly, Py Triton, and then any other library they're going to be using like PyTorch, Diffusers, Transformers, etc. You just install all of your Python dependencies like you normally would, and then this is going to work. Now, this runs on Python version 3.8, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and that's really all you need to know. Now, getting it set up on WSL can be a little bit challenging depending on how you have your windows configured. What I found was the easiest to do was to install Docker Desktop. And then from Docker Desktop, there's a little setting you can click that says enable WSL um, like configuration or back end or something like that. If you do that, then all of a sudden it's going to give you access to the Docker command inside of your WSL. And then all you need to do is pull the Docker image. Um, again, all of this is available from the uh, NVIDIA GitHub. Once you're inside of that container, you simply create whatever Python code it is that you want to run, install the different Python dependencies, and then you're pretty much good to go. Obviously, there's a lot further you can go with this, but that's really all you need to know if you want to get things set up. Again, follow all the links and documentation. I'm also going to have a GitHub that contains all of the code you just saw in this video. So if you're interested in checking that out and kind of messing with that demo yourself, feel free to do that. With that said, guys, I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. A big thanks to NVIDIA for partnering with me on this video. I know that this was really just showcasing their product. However, this is something that's quite cool. When they first showed it to me and gave me kind of an exclusive demo, I thought it was really interesting and valuable and that you guys would find some value in it. Hence why I'm making this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another one.